Hey, baby. What's up? How come Santa never gets sick, but he's always outside in the cold? That's a good question. It's because he's got Santa bodies. Oh. Hey. <laughs> Hey guys, Victoria Dorsato here, and for those of you that don't know me, I'm a certified health coach with an evidence-based approach so that you don't have to fall for fad diets and wellness misinformation on the interwebs. Today we are talking about the immune system and why boosting it is actually a terrible idea. But before I can get into that, if you would just take a second or two and hit that like button down below, I'd super appreciate it. So in case you haven't noticed, there's been a lot of talk about just immune boosting in general over the past year since COVID really emerged. And articles have just been swirling around Facebook and those long chain emails that we know we hate with products and potions to quote unquote boost your immune system. I mean, even if you just take a normal stroll down the aisle of Walgreens or your local pharmacy, you'll see a huge number of products just claiming to boost your immune system naturally. But the funny thing is that boosting your immune system is actually not a good thing if you are just a healthy individual without a compromised immune system, like people on immunosuppressants. So here's why the immune system acts as our protector. At its core, it's made up of two complementary immune systems. We have the innate and the acquired or adaptive. They're kind of interchangeably used. So think of your innate immune system as the body's natural and kind of quick twitch reaction to an unknown or completely new infection. Innate immunity acts quickly and covers a broad spectrum of the body, and it's not super specific as to what its target is exactly. When this system gets triggered, it can create a, a basically just a cascade of symptoms like fever, which is kind of the body's way of trying to kill a foreign invader um, with its high temperature, right? You get cough, runny nose, aches, etc. You can kind of just think of these symptoms as general inflammation, which as a fun side note, see, there's a really cool connection between the word inflammation and flame. Do you see it? Inflammation, flame. The word inflammation actually comes from the Latin word inflammare, which means to set on fire. Hence the fever, boom. Anyways, thank you for entertaining my weird word connections in the way that I like to connect medical words to Latin. It's kind of cool how they do that. But you can already see why it probably wouldn't be great for you to boost this part of your immune system, right? It's probably not in your best interest to create more inflammation in the body. In fact, individuals who have an overreactive immune system, where this innate part has a problem of kind of turning off, can actually develop some autoimmune conditions that lead to chronic inflammation. Now, moving on to the other part of our immune system, your acquired immunity. So your acquired immunity is just something that is built over a lifetime, and it's responsible for creating more of a targeted response to a foreign invader. So that next time your body encounters that same specific invader, again, it has an army of antibodies ready to attack that are specific just to that invader. The only way for the body to build up that acquired immunity is simply exposure to more invaders over the course of your lifetime. And this can be done by way of natural infection, of course, or by the invader being weakened and then injected into your body, AKA a vaccination. So that would mean that all those immune boosting products that are marketed to us are actually targeting the innate immune system. Remember, that's the fiery one that creates all this generalized kind of inflammation going on. And chronic inflammation, like I said before, due to our innate immune system being boosted to on 24 seven, not so good. Because too much immunity can lead to those autoimmune conditions, allergies, tissue damage, and even anaphylaxis. So what are those immune boosting products actually containing and do they do anything at all? Most of these products end up falling into usually a couple categories, um, sometimes either vitamins or probiotics. So there is some truth in that vitamins can help immunity, but this only really makes the biggest impact in people that are severely malnourished. So if you're fairly well nourished, you're not really needing these immune boosting vitamins. As far as probiotics go, there seems to be some good research being done that links certain types of microbes to the gut and enhanced immunity, but they've yet to found evidence that it supports the use of dietary supplements like probiotic pills to enhance that immunity. 
Although you don't want to necessarily boost your immune system, there are some things you can do to keep your immune system functioning at its best. And these recommendations would really be things that support, you know, other systems of the body as well that work complementary with the immune system. So things like eating a balanced diet and getting some daily movement in and managing your stress can all help your immune system and the body in general stay just in tip top shape. So I hope you guys liked this video. I know it was pretty short, but I just wanted to give you guys just a general overview of number one, the immune system, and number two, why you don't actually wanna boost it. And then I guess number three, why you shouldn't be spending your money on those types of supplements. And okay, number four, um, that there's some basic things lifestyle-wise that you can do to just keep yourself functioning at its best. So it's not too complicated. Um, and that's what I hope to be providing in these videos. So if you liked this video and hope to learn more in future ones, please go ahead and like this video again and subscribe for future videos. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye.